What do you guys think about Dan Heron going to the Nationals? One year, $13 million. We talked about it before we well, went Well, let me on. jump real quick. I'll just yeah. say first that, that, that it's eerily reminiscent of the one-year deal they signed Edwin Jackson to last year. Jackson's deal came late in the process. This came, comes earlier, and it's for a little bit more money. Uh, you know, Heron, his, the peripheral numbers were way down on Dan Heron. He's always given up a lot of hits. He yeah. throws strikes. He gives up a lot of hits. Uh, but he didn't walk anybody. Uh, but the strikeouts were down, and the fastball was around 84 miles an hour. So it wouldn't, uh, if Dan Heron were close to being done, because once pitchers start that slide, sometimes it doesn't reverse. The flip side is maybe it was just a bad year, and he had some bad luck, and he comes back, and he's a, you know, he, that's a guy at times can't look like a really solid number two starter. So even though it's a lot of money, 13 million bucks, for one year, there's no danger for anybody on a one-year deal. So it's a great signing for the Nationals. What do you think? <laughs> And I think with the Nationals, too, a lot of people have this perception and until the, the Jason Worth deal that this was a team that wasn't going to spend money, that they didn't have the money to spend. Uh, the Lerner family is one of the richest owners in baseball. And, and so when they made that Worth deal, it was twofold. One, it was to bring in a guy that was going to be a, a mainstay veteran presence for that team. You can argue whether or not that was you know a good deal for them. It, it, it's certainly not from a financial standpoint. but. It also helped create this perception that Washington would be willing to spend the money. Right. Their team was going to be competitive, and, and that certainly has helped. Um, with, with somebody like a Dan Heron, I love this move for the Nationals because instead of Edwin Jackson, you now have Dan Heron. And, and this is a guy who I believe, uh, other than Mark Burley, was one of the few pitchers who had pitched more than 200 innings for I think it was either four or five consecutive seasons. Uh, last year was the first year that he hadn't done that. Um, and he had an average of a, of a 3.33 ERA in his five years um, with the Angels. And, and then last year, it went up to a 4.33 mark. So he's only 32 years old. Uh, you're taking a one-year deal on a guy that's probably going to pitch out of the number four or the number five spot in your rotation. Uh, he's got good stuff. And if healthy, uh, you've seen what the Nationals pitching staff has been able to do. And you know, now you're going to have a full year of Steven Strasburg. There's not going to be any more of the ridiculousness that came with last year. I think well, it's a very good move. Well, right. The issue, though, is, is, is totally the health. I mean, it's, it, last year was the first year he was hurt, and, and, and the numbers were significantly down. So I don't think anybody should be surprised if it turns out Dan Heron isn't the Dan Heron he was from, from Oakland and Arizona and the Angels. Sure. They're probably banking on somewhere in the middle between of, of what yeah, they well, uh, but, last year versus the last five years before that uh, out in Anaheim, I would say. Yeah, I think that's right. I mean, that's what they're hoping for. And that'll be, I like Dan here. I like all former A's. Really quickly, let me get both of you guys, uh, your opinions really quickly. Nick Swisher, where does he go? I don't know. Cleveland, maybe, uh, would certainly uh, be a fit. You know, anywhere's a fit for Nick Swisher uh, because he's a good player. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, he wants to get paid. So I'm curious where he's going to get paid. And if Nick Swisher is looking at ends up taking a one-year deal for a lot of money. Or if he's going to hold out and go somewhere where he's never going to win, like perhaps Cleveland. I don't know how significant or good their plan is. So you think Cleveland are the are I the think front Cleveland's a possible. But, I mean, look, you're talking about an outfielder who's going to hit 25 home runs, draw a lot of walks. That's an incredibly useful guy. Hi, so what do you think? I, I think Cleveland makes a lot of sense. I agree with Ben. Because, in particular, if you're going to try and trade Shin Su Chu, who's uh, arguably one of their best players right now, uh, to try and get some pitching help, which Cleveland desperately needs, um, you plug in a guy like Swisher, he's going to enjoy playing for someone like Terry Francona. Francona knows what he brings when he faced him uh, when he was in New York for all those years managing in Boston. I, I think that move makes a lot of sense. I wouldn't rule out Philadelphia as a possible destination as well because I don't know if they're, they're if they love what they have right now in right field. Um, yeah, I think they, a lot of they depends. don't. You're right. Yeah, Philadelphia right. would make sense. Um, you know, there's still I, I think the potential mystery team for Josh Hamilton as well. Uh, although I, I I'm pretty sure that Hamilton will end up back in Texas with the, the Dodgers ending up going after Granke. The, the Rangers say they're interested in Granke. Um, I know they are. Uh, I, I just don't think they're going to put that type of money down to be able to lock him up for that amount of time. You know, the Dodgers were offering uh, were uh, offering Chris Capuano and Aaron Harang around the league yesterday, which suggested to a lot of people, uh, and I, to myself included, that that means that they feel 100% confident that they have Zach Granke. Well, who's, who's going to outbid him at this point? Nobody's going to outbid him. They can literally exactly. pay $20 million no. more than everybody else and just they don't seem to care. It's going to be very easy to hate the Los Angeles Dodgers going forward. <laughs> That's not, that is something I'm not going to have any trouble with. By the way, I bet Michael Bourne signs with the Phillies.